Hello book people, PT here. Today I want to talk to you about the book uh, A Wild Sheep Chase by Haruki Murakami. This is the first Murakami book that I've read. I've been wanting to check out his stuff for a while. And it's the final novel that I read in 2016. And in a year that sometimes kind of felt like I was reading the same old books again and again, this book was really a breath of fresh air. I'm so glad that I read it and I'm glad I tried Murakami's uh, writing and I can't wait to read a couple more books by him uh, this coming year. So if you look at the synopsis of this book, basically what it says on the back cover and in the descriptions is uh, that it's about an, an ad executive who uh, uses in an ad, uses an image he got from a postcard that a friend sent him. And because of that image, in the background of that image, there is a sheep with a black star on it. Um, and because of that, he gets called in by these, these powerful people who basically tell him, you have to find this sheep for us uh, within a month or we're going to destroy your life. Um, so from that setup, it sounds like it's kind of a conventional thriller, albeit a little bit odd that they're looking for the sheep. But um, when, when, so when I read this book, I was a little taken aback because I kept waiting for that to happen. And uh, that doesn't happen until like a third of the way through the book, first of all. And second of all, when it does happen, it's much weirder than it sounds. Uh, and I won't, I won't get into the details of why, because like I said, it's a third of the way into the book. And I don't want to ruin anything, but... Um, the events in this book are very, very strange, and it deals with the strange in a great way. Like, uh, you know, one of my favorite authors is Stephen King. I always go back to his work again and again, and I think one of his skills is he makes takes weird, strange, crazy things and makes them and blends them with kind of the everyday world in a way that they don't seem as strange, or at least they seem a little more believable because of the way he blends them in. Mirakami takes like almost the exact opposite approach where he takes these really weird ideas and makes no effort to like de-weird them. He, <laughs> those things in this book are super weird and he doesn't, doesn't like hide those at all. Like one thing that happens early on in the book is the, the main character meets a woman and um, starts dating her and uh, this woman has the most beautiful ears in the world and she actually has to wear her hair down because if she pulls back her hair and reveals her ears, basically everyone around just stops being able to function doing what they're doing like she does it in a restaurant just to demonstrate and uh, the waiter is like pouring water just like misses the glass because he's just staring at her ears he can't believe how beautiful her ears are they're the perfect ears so that's just like a weird little side thing that's not even the main point of the story so lots of really weird things going on in here but boy it really works and it's it's hard to describe why without experiencing it yourself um, as far as just the writing itself was really cool, I really like his writing style. It's kind of a style, a style that I would definitely aspire to write like him. Um, he writes these pretty short sentences that aren't flowery. They're very much to the point, but he also he often has really interesting turns of phrase and really uh, apt and uh, unique uh, analogies and things like he just, the way he just says things in a way that uh, is different than than I've ever heard them said before so I love that style of writing where it's it's not showy really but it is very insightful and, and very beautiful in a simplistic kind of way another interesting and weird thing about this book is that none of the characters are called by their name they don't like have any names it's written in the first person the main character's name is never stated um, all the other characters names aren't stated like the woman with the beautiful ears is just called the woman with the beautiful ears or my girlfriend eventually when he starts dating her um, there's characters are called like the chauffeur or whatever their their job is um, the only the, the couple characters have a nickname like there's a character the rat who appears I think in some of Mirakami's other books but um, other than a couple little nicknames like that, no one is called by name, which was an inter interesting choice. And then there's a portion of the book where they actually address that and talk about it. And the main character says, you know what, I don't really like names. Why, why can't uh, why can't we just call me me and you you and us us? Why do we have to use names? So uh, the, an interesting choice, I thought. Anyway, I could talk about this book probably for a long time, but uh, let me. I just want to recommend it that if you've never read any Mirakami, this, you know, I haven't read any of his other stuff, but this was a really good place to start. Just know that you're getting in for some, some surreal stuff in it, and uh, I really enjoyed it. The only like maybe knock against it, if I could even call it that, is I'm still grappling a little bit with the ending. Like I just finished this yesterday, and I'm still trying to um, figure out like what 
what the ending, not really what it means. I mean, I know it was pretty clear what happened and what it means, but I'm trying to figure out like what, like how it fits in. Why did it end like that? And I'm still re- grappling with that a little bit. But anyway, that's probably a good sign too, is that it's a book that I'm going to be thinking about probably for a while. Uh, if you've read any Murakami and want to recommend me uh, another book by him, I would love to hear what books you have and haven't enjoyed by this author. So that's a wild sheep, sheep chase. Here's a couple other reviews you might enjoy. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.